Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Heroes in a Half Shell, Turtle Power. <laughs> Can you believe Chuck Lorre doesn't see a cent from that? Yeah. Yeah. That's another the reason why they, they should be striking right now. It, it's not. It's not covered under that. Yeah. Whatever. Welcome back to Story Bros with the Movies, where today we're going to see what all the fuss is about on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. So, our history with the Turtles is we were not Ninja Tur Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles kids. We've discussed this when we talked about the first, first of the Michael Bay ne Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movies, but we did not really grow up with a deep abiding love of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, mostly because we were kids of the 90s and early 80s. So we mostly, have, so most of our Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles knowledge is, comes just from cultural osmosis. We did watch a little bit of the 2000s cartoon, and we've seen stuff from the 2012 cartoon. Maybe one day we'll buckle down and actually watch something, teeny, some Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles shows. We definitely saw the 90s movie. Those are good. The first and, and second 90s movies, those two are very good. And the 2008 one, I know that that one um, doesn't get a lot of love, but I kind of like it. Yeah, it's a really good one. Yeah, that one is also really good. Like, those three are the, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movies are the best. But when it comes down to the... Who, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, we're not big fans. We're not... So when we say we did... Hey, we do, they, we've heard good things about this one and it made us kind of think we should jump into it, that's what we're going in for. Also, just because it looks awesome and the team behind it is great. But, so, this one around, this time around, after Michael Bay kind of... The Michael Bay version kind of thoroughly annihilated any chance of finishing off the tr a live action trilogy along with the fact that they were tr that apparently the cr the actors on on it were treated like crap and have according to Alan Richson and it's in, hey look look straight hey look maybe pay your fucking actors and writers and give them some and give them some pop proper fucking respect after that and uh, went out with a whimper instead of a roar it basically led us to who this place where the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles were kind of in a, at a standstill. The 2012 series ended, and they made Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles pretty much since Nick now pretty, Nickelodeon owns pretty much the entirety of the rights to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Now, Rise is a, has its fans and everything. We've what I think we watched the first episode. We watched the first episode. Did not watch any of the episodes afterwards. Have not seen the movie. It's a, it's all on Netflix, so there's no literally no excuse for us not watching it other than. We're not that huge of Turtles fans. Yeah, that's pretty much the reason why we didn't watch it in the first... Why we didn't end up watching it after we watched the first episode. But we've heard Rise is good. We've heard that the movie is good. But now Paramount wants to restart the franchise again because it's been a few year, years. Because that's just kind of how Paramount is with this franchise where they're just kind of going to juggle around and reboot the Turtles every couple of years. And this time around, they've decided to tap as producers Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg, who have been killing it in the comic book genre, but more in the TV realm than in the theatrical realm. And not even just that, but also the deconstruction realm. Um, specifically, they've been producing Invincible and The Boys, which are both very thoroughly comic book adaptations from people who are deconstructing the comic book superhero genre. Yes. And so, and so, I don't know what led Paramount to approach Seth and Evan themselves, other than, hey, the stoners probably know a thing or two about cartoons. And they probably know a thing or two about the fucking teenager, about the thing, about the thing that just saying the title makes you think that the people who made it were stoned out of their minds when they came up with it. I mean, I don't know what, I mean, once again, I don't know what they were going for, because Seth Rogen isn't exactly... Because I don't think there's been any indication that Seth Rogen likes the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles more than he likes most other comic book superheroes, but, I mean, they could put in the trailer that it was from Perpetual from perpetual Teenager Seth Rogen as, as a writer and producer. Yes, and also this time around they've brought in writer-director Jeff Rowe, who is, mo who is mostly known at this point for being a writer on Gravity Falls and co-writing and co-directing the excellent Mitchells vs. the Machines. So, obviously, this is in great hands in at least the 
behind the scenes stuff. Then when it comes to who is taking the mic in this particular animated project, we have got a, a star-studded cast beyond all compare for any other Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles project. We have got Rose Byrne, Seth Rogen, John Cena, Paul Rudd, duh, Hud, Ice Cube, Jackie Chan. We have a big celebrity cast for uh, for a lot of the roles, but this time around, the Turtles are being played by actual teenage actors. Yes, for the first time in a long time. I don't even know how, how long. They have got. They were like, let's play up the teenage aspect of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So the actors are that are voicing the turtles are actually teenagers. And so you can hear that in all of their voices. Yes. And yeah, that's pretty much all we can go with because we don't know who these actor who most of these actors are. I believe one of them was in Good Boys. Well, we never saw Good Boys. Yeah. So that's pretty much where Seth Rogen got him from, but it's also just interesting that there's a lot of stuff carried over from previous iterations, like like Donatello didn't start wearing glasses until they decided that he was going to wear glasses in the Michael Bay version, which carried over to Rise, which is carrying over to this. And also, the and just kind of the characterizations of the turtles have always been the same in the way they are. Cool dude, party dude, who, 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 who leads the team, Mad Machine. It does machines. It means it's, it's all there. But it's interesting, to, it's going to be interesting to see where a lot of this goes. We've heard a lot of great things about it, including a lot of funny jokes and some very cool d appe visually appealing stuff. I have been trying to avoid spoilers, for, a lot of spoilers for it, although we can't avoid the fact that there is apparently a sequel tease in the end of, at the end of this. But it, the fun thing is that the animation style seems to be playing very much from Spider-Verse in the idea that, hey, let's just throw some very comic booky energy at these characters. Yes. Like we said with Across the Spider-Verse, a lot of movies, this, a lot of movies that, especially this year, with your, have, are basically it being the stuff have basically been changed because of Spider-Verse, like, like this, and Nimona, and again, Wish, next later this year. Also, I apologize for forgetting to mention Arcane in the Spider-Verse video. Yes. But, yeah, that's where a lot of, we get a lot of cool anime, we're now getting a lot of cool looking animation film projects because of Spider-Verse, and this is one of those cool looking animation projects. Because it and apparently Seth Rogen learned a little something from the so from the controversy that came out after Sausage Party was released, and where apparently he was telling Jeff Rowe to make sure her that everyone was comfortable in the animation team. Because he didn't want to because he clearly didn't want to produce be once again be the producer in a project where all the animators were suffering from overtime and a lot of other somewhat toxic behavior. So, but yeah, that's it. We've heard good things. We've things, but we don't. But we we were kind of on the fence to see this beforehand because we are not huge Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fans. We were Power Rangers kids. Yeah, we're waiting for the day when they actually move forward on whatever they're gonna do with that reboot. I don't. I don't even. I think Paramount has it now. I don't know. Which means maybe we can do a Power Rangers Turtles crossovers if this works. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. But for right now, I guess we'll have to see what we think of this. And, uh, I guess we'll see you after the jump. Can I just say between this and literally everything else that they've made since Gravity Falls ended, I've really liked just about everything we've seen from former Gravity Falls crew members. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like this was a fun time. And probably the best Ninja Turtles movie we've seen in a theater, which is saying much, but you know. I would actually go as so far as to say it might be the best Ninja Turtles movie. Granted, we had, that's us saying that without having actually seen all of the Ninja Turtles movies. But, but you know, as far as, as far as who, how, who the Ninja Turtles are and what they represent and who they, and what the, his, Kind of movie just kind of is rep is 
building to I thought it was a fun time and I thought that the emotional beats worked and worked and I really liked the comedy was amazing some really good comedy some references that I didn't think they would be able to get, that I'm actually surprised that we were able to get away with yeah that's the thing about this movie it's ref, pop culture reference heavy like if you think we're bad with referencing pop culture references yeah this movie's got another thing coming but then again that's because these are actual the characters actually talk like actual teenagers and that's mostly because you know they're played by actual teenagers. And the kids clearly are recording in the same room, are clearly in the same room. It could not be more clear that these, that at a certain point, they just let these, these kids just improv because it feel, it has this very loose feel to it that just kind of makes everything feel real. Yeah. And, of course, there are celebrity cameos, as we pointed out, a lot of the mutants, which are supposedly, which are according to people who know more about this than us, basically, let's dig in deep down into the toy chest and see which teenage, obscure Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles characters we can make, and a lot of them are comedic side characters played by, by, by the voice actors doing their basic comedic shtick. For example, well, well, Paul Rudd as Mondo Gecko is probably the performance of the entire movie because he, he, every word out of his mouth is just hilarious. Yes, we have, he has especially has some great rapport with Mikey, where it's where you're basically sitting there going, Mikey, I think Michelangelo just found his soulmate, <laughs> and and of course, or he and of course, there's all the stuff with John Cena and Seth Rogen, which is not a lot. Bebop and Rocksteady for being some of uh, the teenage mutant, one of the most iconic teenage mutant ninja turtles, turtles bad guy sets outside of Shredder is just kind of kind of underused. But then again, I guess Seth Rogen kind of was like, I don't want to put too much of me in here. Yeah. But also, but also, it's just fun that Seth Rogen is playing a warthog for the second time. Yeah. It's. I mean, this has a lot of things. Of different things than in most Ninja Turtles movies have going for it. For starters, it's st we pretty much start and uh, can, and throughout the course of the movie are with the tur from the turtles' perspective. Like there's no see like we don't start slowly building up to the turtles. Literally, we start the movie starts and it's like, look, you just saw the you literally just saw the title two seconds ago. If you don't know there are turtles in this movie. I don't know what you have to tell you, man. Which pretty much seems to be the thing with every... Which, we have not seen... Again, we haven't seen every Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie, but that pretty much is how every single one of them starts, where it's just from the perspective of the humans. This time around, we are fully in the Turtles' world. And it's... And they, of course, they tell the backstory again. They do their own fun little thing with it. They... Hang with it. There's a lot of fun from J Jackie Chan as Splinter. Jackie Chan as Splinter is probably one of the highlights of this movie, no doubt. Yeah, because Jackie Chan knows the parts. He, he knows gets, what he's he doing. gets this. He knows what he's doing. But even if there's one scene where they play the us the theme song to the wrong Karate Kid. Yes. But still, but still, it's just fun to see. He, he that this is the movie that got Jackie Chan as Splinter. And also, speaking of the needle drops, there's a lot of them, and the, and most of them are great. And you can basically you can tell that the people who made this movie, movie are are '90s hip hop fans because so many of the songs in this movie are just pure '90s hip hop. Like "Tribe Called Quest" is in here, and you're in just about everything in between. I mean, you don't get more 90s hip hop than Ice Cube. <laughs> and Ice T, and Ice, Ice T gets referenced a lot. Vanilla Ice, of course, the ninja dance needs to be thrown in there somewhere. Yeah. And uh, this is just kind of a movie that's like, let's throw everything at the wall and see what sticks. And it's, it's and shockingly, every joke, almost every joke seems to land. It works on a different... It takes it to a different level. We get a lot of great material that can get a lot of people laughing. There are a lot of parents in our audience, in our theater laughing. And it's just kind of... And 
yeah, a lot of it feels loose off the cuff. It feels like feels like the like at some points they just kind of handed the people the storyboards and was like, here, do a riff off of that. Yeah, and then the care. As for the character designs, we have something. Comp- These are wholly unique ways to interpret characters. This fi- it feels like what like it feels like they took the models from Paranorman and like threw a paint filter over the top of them. It is a very Henry Selleck design. Like if you look at the characters here and compare them to stuff like Wendell and Wild or or any of the or any of the stuff like is doing. You really get the vibe of it. it where they're just kind of angular and different and not exactly symmetrical. Hell, at times it almost feels like the characters are moving as stop motion fi- in the same way that stop motion figures will move. Yeah. And and that's just kind of fun. And also, I we, everybody's comparing this to Spider-Verse. This is a completely different art style. Like... Yeah, it's a, like Spider Verse feels like someone took an ink pen and drew over the models and made it and made it look like a comic book to come to life. This looks more like crayon and marker drawn over the three D models to make it look like a comic book come to life, this which lo- it's just like, kind of bringing back to the old indie comic roots of this. This looks like like the turtles never have never looked like this before, but this looks like the like a middle schooler doodled most of the story, most of the concept art for this in the margins of their stu- of their social studies homework in study hall. And then the actual character designers came in and cleaned it up. Yeah, and it's and it's really really breathtaking to see these things in motion, and also to see the t- when we get close up and we see like texture, like you feel like you see smudge marks on the characters. Characters. It's the little imperfections that make the, the art style more unique, which makes it just, just pop even more. It does take a minute to get used to at times. The color is a little, because the color can be a little jarring, and the way the characters move can be a little, it can take a second to get to adjust. But that's also a problem, but it's kind of a true, but that's also something to attribute to the stop motion of it all, kind of stop motion of it all. And it's just kind of, and it's just kind of a kid's movie in the way that it's in the way that the whole message is family and acceptance and everything like that but it's very but it's just kind of this nice little movie I don't think it's gonna I mean it may get nominated for an Oscar may not I don't know but I mean in terms of a comic book movie this is one of those times where it feels like a fully realized comic book come to life movie and I (laughs) And I really think that this is just going to be a fun movie. I don't know how, if it's gonna, if a sequel's on the horizon. Rumor has it that they're taking the sequel is on the horizon as well as a TV show. Yeah, rumor With has it that they, yeah, ru- they literally just said uh, there's a rumor going around that the, that Nickelodeon already commissioned the TV show with the actors coming back. Yeah, they have already now, they've kind of announced they're developing a TV show with these actors, actors but as a continuation of this movie as well as the sequels on the way, which I'm looking forward to just because I'm as as I was sitting there in there, I was honestly thinking I want could easily see myself watching three more of these, and it's just kind of got this energy, this vibe. You can tell that Jeff Rowe and the co-writer and his co-writers and his co-director and his and the whole team just really like these characters enough to just be like, hey, let's just make a fun Ninja Turtles movie where they like fight monsters and eat pizza and make pop culture references. That's the thing about movies like this that are kind of sort of rebooting now with these movies, where we're just kind of being able to where it's just kind of giving it back to the fans. There's something so not cynical about movie these movies suddenly where we're giving where like we have a Transformers fan making a Transformers movie. We have a Mutant Ninja Turtles fan making a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. We there's just no cynicism. They're just taking the cynicism away from what these movies were back in the early 2010s in the late oddies, early 2010s. Uh, way before everything got all, needed to have meta jokes and stuff like that. It's 
and that's not to say that meta humor is bad inherently. It's just that it's been done so much over the last few years, and, and it's been done to mixed result. It has been best. It has been done good, and it has been done awful. And half the and a good majority of the time, it is not great. With most because they're tr they think they're ripping off Mar mostly because they think they're ripping off Marvel's humor style. But the, but then you'll see. I mean, you'll see. But this is a movie that is very much. They know that this is a fun premise. They don't have there's not an ounce of ounce of meta, meta critiques or critiques or cynicism. It's just a fun, goofy movie about a about a bunch of ninja turtles fighting a bunch of monsters. There's a bunch of teenagers who just happen to be mutant ninja turtles fighting monsters in fighting a bunch of mutants in New York and just wanting to be teenagers and that's another and that's another thing this movie does it just kind of goes in a different direction it ends differently than most ninja turtle projects yeah it takes the turtles right the turtles are in a different place than, at the end of this movie than they have ever been in any piece of turtles media there has been so i'm interested to see where that goes yeah and it's just gonna be Oh, and it was just a fun ride. I, I really dug it. Yeah. I think that's it, unless you can remember anything about Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross's score to talk about. I mean, it was. Pre I mean, it had some pretty good, good tones to it, but it was mostly. But most of it was just the Neil. I can remember right off the top of my head right now is Neil Jeffs. Okay, so that's about it. It's, it Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem is a good movie. I real. I liked it. I. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Don't have, don't have notes, no notes. Just make, make just, more of them. Just make more of them, and hopefully have as much fun with this one as you, you had fun with the others. And be sure to, so be sure to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and leave in the comments what you thought of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles: Mutant Mayhem in the comments. And don't forget to tune in next time when Batman's a fascist.